Like most Israelis, I am against the creation of a Palestinian state, and I hope that by the end of this video, you will better understand the Israeli point of view. Before we dive into it, I want to zoom out to talk about the Middle East. You hear so much about what is wrong with Israel, but if you look at the countries surrounding Israel, you quickly see that the situation there is much worse. Lebanon is falling apart. Syria has already fallen apart. Jordan and Egypt are not stable. There is a terrible war in Yemen, and you probably know about the chaos in Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan. Do you know how many Syrians died last year in the terrible war there? You probably don't, so let me tell you. 6,500. Most of them are civilians. That's about 20 deaths a day. If Israel were to kill 20 Arabs a day, there would be violent demonstrations throughout the Arab world and in many European cities. Do you know how many children have died so far in the civil war in Yemen? You can't blame Israel for it, so maybe it is not that important. Have you ever Googled women's rights in Egypt? Please do. Some of the basic rights, and I mean very basic rights, that Western women enjoy will never be enjoyed by most Egyptian women. And I could give you 10 more sad examples. Now you might say that I'm trying to distract from the main issue. But if you claim to be outraged by what Israel is doing, but you don't care about all the horrible things that are happening just a few kilometers from here, then maybe you are being a bit of a hypocrite. If you disagree with me, cool, I love discussions. I love free speech, but try to be fair. Don't just call me a liar or say that I'm biased. Those are not proper arguments against what I'm saying. I can't find much in the way of democracy, human rights, and women's rights in the Arab Muslim society. Prove me wrong if you can. Now let's talk about the so-called Palestinians. When the British came here at the end of World War I, they basically invented two nations, the Jordanians and the Palestinians, two nations that never existed before. It is very easy to prove that. Name a Palestinian leader before Arafat. Show me a Palestinian coin. What were the borders of this land? The land of Israel has been a pilgrimage destination for 3,000 years, first for the Jews who came to the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and also in the last 1,600 years for Christian pilgrims. Millions of pilgrims came from all over the world to visit the holy sites. Some of them documented their journey, and over these 3,000 years, no pilgrim ever reported talking to or seeing a Palestinian. They saw Jews, Arab, Jews, Armenians, but no one ever encountered a Palestinian. Even when the Arabs revolted against the British in the 1930s, they themselves called it the Arab Revolt and not the Palestinian Revolt. The name Palestina is not an Arab name. It was given to this region after the Jews rebelled against the Romans in 132. The Romans got so mad at the Jews that they attempted to erase the connection between the Jews and their land. So they changed the name of Jerusalem to Ilia Capitolina and the name of Judea to Palestina. So if you're anti-imperialism and anti-colonialism, you should really be pro-Israel and anti-Palestinian, seeing as they got their name from the colonial Roman Empire and borders from the British Empire. The only true Palestinians are those Muslim Christians and Jews who were born under the British mandate. Like my grandmother, she has a Palestinian birth certificate. If you were born after the British mandate, you were either Israeli, Jordanian, or Egyptian. Now you might be saying, okay, fine, but they are still human beings who have the right to define themselves as they see fit, even if they were invented by the British. After all, the colonial powers invented many countries in Africa and the Middle East, and you are, of course, quite right. They can call themselves whatever they want, but it doesn't give them the right to rewrite history and try to annihilate us. In 1947, the UN proposed that the land be divided into a Jewish state and an Arab state. Again, Arab, not Palestinian. But the Arabs started a war to annihilate the Jews. Luckily, they lost. It is important to clear up another issue here. Up until the war, the Jews had never stolen a single square inch of local Arab land. The Jews bought all the land they settled on until the Arab lost some land in a war that they themselves started. And if you're thinking that many Jews came to Israel as immigrants, you're right, as did the Arabs. Jews arrived by sea and hundreds of thousands of Arabs 
from all over the Middle East arrived by land to work for the British. Just as today, millions of Arabs immigrate to Christian countries in Europe for work and a better life. That is exactly what happened in the 30s and 40s in the land of Israel. In Jewish and Christian countries, there is prosperity and work, whereas in most Arab Muslim countries, how can I put it nicely, there is less prosperity. But let's jump to the 50s and the aftermath of the War of Independence and ask ourselves, why didn't the Arabs in the West Bank and Gaza establish their own country back then? They had 19 years to do that, but they didn't do it. Now, what is interesting is that only after 1967, when the Arabs had threatened to wipe Israel out again and lost again, that they suddenly decided to become a nation state. The Palestinians don't want a peaceful state alongside Israel. They want to eliminate Israel. Now, I will say something that might surprise you. I respect Hamas much more than the so-called human rights organizations that act against Israel, because at least Hamas is a movement of honest. They are extreme people that say what they want. The Hamas declaration starts with a sentence, Israel will exist until Islam obliterates it. I respect them. And so should you. They don't say, we want a peaceful democratic state alongside Israel. Maybe that's what some people in the West want them to want. But the Arabs are very clear in their objectives. Even Hamas doesn't claim that it's the Palestinians who will wipe out Israel, but rather Islam. And it is not just their words. It is interesting to see how the Palestinians treat each other. Take Israeli society. There are many political, social, and religious tensions between us Jews. But despite these tensions, there have been very few occasions where the tension actually erupted into violence. In Israel, you can have huge demonstrations without smashing windows or burning cars. Only very rarely have Jews killed other Jews due to political differences. And each time it has occurred, Altalena, the murder of Dehan, Tubiansky, Rabin, and Emil Grinzweig, it was a national trauma that we still talk about decades after it happened. The Palestinians have killed thousands of other Palestinians in internal conflicts. Often the Palestinians kill more fellow Palestinians in a single day than Jews have killed fellow Jews over the course of a hundred years. And the way you behave in your house is the way you act outside. A few days ago, a Palestinian terrorist murdered a man and two boys. As usual, the Palestinians celebrated with fireworks and candy in the street. And this is what they published. So what is the solution? Golda Meir, the Israeli prime minister in the 70s, said that peace would come when the Arabs love their own kids more than they hate us. When you see what the Arabs are doing to one another, you know that peace is still far off. The huge amount of violence in the Arab Muslim world, half a million dead in Syria, 350,000 dead in Yemen, violence and upheaval in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Libya. All of this turmoil has nothing to do with Israel and the Jews and everything to do with Arab Muslim values. It is disappointing to see that there are no Arab leaders stating this very obvious fact. Think about it. All the Muslim organizations you hear about in the news, ISIS, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Muslim Brothers, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, organizations that have the support of hundreds of millions of Muslims worldwide are not big fans of democracy or women's rights. And as far as I know, and I might be wrong, they are not a big fans of the LGBTQ plus community either. Large parts of the left somehow fail to notice it. Instead of demonstrating against the cruel Iranian regime and supporting the brave Iranian women, the mayor of Barcelona last week decided to cut off all connections with Tel Aviv because of Israeli apartheid. Two million Arabs are living in Israel. There are hundreds of active mosques in Israel, Arabs in Israeli parliament, and Arabs in Israel's Supreme Court. Do you know how many Jews live in the Palestinian authorities? Zero. Nada. Gurnish. Arabs enjoy more rights in the Jewish state than in any other Arab country in the Middle East. The hatred toward Israel is so strong that the left-wing parties of Europe will cut off Tel Aviv, a city where women are free and gay couples can adopt children, but keep donating to Hamas, which throw gay people from rooftops. It is more than hypocrisy. It is madness. Even if Israel were to disappear from the face of the earth tomorrow, 
there would still be no peace in the Middle East, and adding another corrupted Arab Muslim dictatorship with no human rights, a Palestinian state, will definitely not bring peace and stability to the region. Please help me share the truth, like, subscribe, and share this video. If you disagree with me and have a smart comment to make, then write it below and I promise I will make a video in response. I will provide the links to in-depth videos I've made about the conflict in the end screen. See you in the next video. Yalla bye.